Hello guys, welcome to lesson number 68 in our series drawing tutorials for beginners. Uh, as I said towards the end of the last video, I really wanted to start trying to bring out the, the dark values in some of these shaded areas. Now I've spent an awful long time here, I've, I've gone through my 6B, uh, 4B, 6B, and then I've gone uh, quite heavily with the Polychromos Black Schwartz coloured pencil. Uh, I did mention towards the end of the last video that if I had to do this again, I would definitely be using uh, one of my charcoal pencils for this. I would be using my Wolf Carbon for this. Um, but what I've done is I've just started to layer uh, and I've had to, something that I don't love doing, but I've had to really start to press on quite hard to try and get the value right. Um, and the reason that I've been doing that is I just think that looking at this this image, the, the reflections, the, the light areas are really what's going to make this jump off of the page. Now, if we haven't got enough contrast in those darker areas, that's something that we're, we're not going to be able to achieve. So I have spent quite a long time doing that. But what we're going to focus on today is with the 2HHB and the 2B pencil, I'm really just going to start darkening some of these mid-tone values uh, using those pencils uh, and I hope that what's then going to start happening is we're going to be able to really start to see where that shine where that super almost white shine is going to uh, is going to be sitting and and getting a better idea for that so we're going to start with the HB pencil because we've got some value already in this area and uh, using my tapered stroke I'm just going to start bringing the value up now now by bringing the the darkest value is really, really quite dark. I mean, we've gone, we've gone to black with that. What that now does is it just shows us how much more value we need to get in a lot of these other areas. Uh, we really, this is probably going to be one of the darkest drawings that I've ever done uh, in terms of the mid-tones. Now I'm hoping that once we've got these mid-tones in, that the highlights are going to be super easy to get right but I can straight away see that working in this area here we have done the right thing now what I want you to be very careful of and obviously I'm trying to make a video for you so that you can see this but I would absolutely get a piece of paper underneath my hand in fact I'm gonna do that right now um, I, I don't like to obscure the image as much as I can, I, I like you to be able to see the reference and the actual drawing itself. But because we've got a lot of that black colour in there now, the black coloured pencil, that really doesn't come off too easily. So if I start to smudge that around the paper, although this isn't a commission and I'm not giving it to anybody, um, it's just a good habit to get into. Now just remember that I'm actually only... I'm only... Uh, not using the piece of paper because I want you to be able to see exactly what it is that I'm drawing. But get into the habit of creating that barrier between your hand and your work. There's nothing worse than grinding graphite down into the paper and not being able to get rid of it and ruining a piece. So I'm just layering this HB pencil on now. We've got a layer of 2H in there already that we did in a previous video. Um, I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. We're coming up to the new year. So you'll be watching this video on New Year's Eve, which um, I hope goes well for you. I wonder what you've got planned. Let me know what you've got planned down in the comments below or over in our fantastic group. We've had some lovely messages over on the Facebook group. If you've not joined the Facebook group yet, I really would advise you to get involved. It's called Tutorial Tuesdays Beginners to Pro. And I post all of the tutorials on there. And we talk about various bits and bobs and art and just have a general chit chat. But people are posting their progress work, asking questions. And uh, it's wonderful that I'm not actually having to answer everybody's questions anymore. Uh, there's, there's a few of you that have been with us for almost from the beginning now and uh, I'm reading comments that you're posting and the advice is spot on it's exactly what I would be giving as advice now the techniques that I'm teaching you know obviously 
art's a wonderful thing and there's many different ways of doing things uh, this is one technique this is something that i've picked up the way that i like to draw the way that i like to render images i i, I want realism i'm into hyper realism and you know super realistic drawings so i like to uh this is the way that i found works the best for me if you haven't been with us for very long and you've you know this might be one of the first videos that you've come across whether that's over on facebook or you've googled it or you you've stumbled across it on youtube i really would advise you to go and have a look at my playlist called essential pencil skills they're lessons one to six like i said we're on lesson 68 now so lesson one to six lays the foundations down and it really gives you the the understanding of the stroke that we're using here obviously on this video it looks as though it's going to look to you as though i'm scribbling but i'm not my pencil isn't moving in two directions it's only moving in one so at the minute i've got a horizontal stroke from sort of right to left then i'm picking the pencil up and i'm doing it again now i've done millions of these strokes over the last three or four years so i'm actually quite quick at them but that's not something that you need to aim for speed is not of the essence here uh, and I'm also fairly accurate now at laying the lines close together. Now, because we are going for a very shiny surface here, what I don't want with my pencil strokes is I don't want I don't want lines in between them. Uh, what I'm doing here is I've just changed the angle of my paper. Uh, I've not got the the paper underneath me there because I'm not. I don't feel like I've got my hand resting in an area where I've got an awful lot of graphite and certainly none of the black polychromos colored pencil um, I've just changed the angle of my paper so that my stroke is just moving in a fractionally different direction now we're building the value up here I'm not bearing down with the pencil and pushing it to its limit I don't want to damage the tooth of the paper. I feel like I may have already damaged the tooth of the paper in those very darkest areas already. Using the black coloured pencil. But hey ho, we're, we're learning together here. And I don't know why, for the life of me, I, I thought that we would be able to get that value with just the pencils. Um, I've drawn aeroplanes before. Some of you may have seen some of the aeroplane work that I've done. And they're very similar to this car. You know, you've got these air inlets or air intakes and they're very dark. They're black. They're holes into the inside of the machine. Um, and I used dwarf carbon for that. So I don't know what possessed me to think that I was going to be able to get enough value. And it, um, for the, I guess some of you have been you know on various different facebook groups and whatnot but there's there's one artist in particular that keeps popping up on one of the facebook a couple of the facebook groups and i'm pretty sure it's a guy uh, it's a sort of scandinavian name and he draws these absolutely amazingly realistic portraits uh, and it seems like it takes him months and months to do it um and I've, I've looked at some of his posts and he thinks that, well, he says that he's only going up to like a, an HB pencil or a 2B or something. I think he might have even just said an H pencil. But some of the darks that he's getting in there are, you know, much, much darker than that. Um, and I've questioned him a couple of times and said, there's no way that you're getting that value with a B. Um, never mind an HB or whatever. It, it, it was one of the posts was odd. I'm sure he said that it was a... He was using like an H and an F pencil um, and some blending stumps and whatnot. Now, I challenge anybody to get something that's darker than this with a B pencil. I don't care what paper you're using or what method you're using to blend with. I think that's almost impossible. Okay, so we're getting a good coverage now. Let's come in with the 2B. I am going to put that piece of paper just underneath my resting hand there. I 
So you see, because we've got that beautiful contrast now around that wheel arch with the where we've gone in with the the coloured pencil, it makes it very easy for us to now build this value up and not worry about if we've gone too dark or if there's an area that we've not quite got right, we can really start ramping this value up which will then mean that we can get some value into the shiny area because we don't want to leave that completely white we don't want that to be solely the white of the paper for the simple reason that it's going to make it look flat and unfinished we want to have some value in there so it might be some 4H that we use in there it might even be some 2H but ultimately we're going to create the look of it being very light because we're going to build the contrast up around it. Yeah, we're definitely going to get some 4B into this area that I'm working on now for sure. What I'm going to do in a second is I'm just going to start taking some value out. There's some very subtle reflections in there. So I'm going to use my Mono Zero eraser. It's a mechanical pencil. You can you can get those on Amazon. You can get everything on Amazon, can't you? I'm just taking a layer of this graphite off there just looking for some of those subtle reflections give that a slight brush I'm just using the HB pencil again now I'm just coming in once you started to get these layers down you can almost blend with the harder pencils really smoothen it out which again is something that we're looking for because we've got a very, very smooth surface here. If we were working on somebody's skin, and we wanted a skin texture in there, then we might not be as worried about keeping these strokes as close together as we are here and as smooth looking. And you can get away with a little bit more when you're drawing natural things, wood textures and things like that. But what we need here is we need this to look machined. We need it to look man-made, glossy, high shine. And I can just darken up around the edges of that highlight that we took out. And that will give me a little bit more contrast in there. So I'm going to work into this area now with the HB again. And using this tapered stroke, what we're doing is we're gradually building the value up. We're not damaging the tooth of the paper. I'm looking for, within this area that I'm drawing, I'm looking for darker areas, lighter areas, even within an area that looks as though it may be all one value if we look carefully you can see subtle differences and that's what takes your drawing to another level now I do recall seeing some of you posting over on the Facebook group a few days ago that you were struggling to print out the images uh, and get the the definition almost and some of the details now I print from my iPad so I will take the reference image a screenshot or if it's from Pixabay or something like that it's just a screenshot so if I were to be using one of the images from the group I would take it as a screenshot that gets saved into my photos on the iPad or the iPhone and then I send it across to the iPad and then I go into the edit mode and I enlarge it as much as I can. You go into the edit and there's, an, there's a section that you, you, can, uh, you can enlarge it and make it the right shape. So I do that and I then turn it into a black and white image. Again, that's under the edit section. 
and from there I printed out. Now I haven't had many issues doing it that way. The images sometimes come out too small so I have to go in and rejig and fiddle around with it a little bit. But generally that is all that I do. Uh, I don't I don't use Photoshop and things like that to print it out. I, I find that I can do as much as I need to do with the image on the, the, the generic photo editing settings on the iPad and the iPhone. So I hope that's cleared things up. You can get other image pieces of software. There's a very good one that I I sometimes use for Instagram posts and things like that. Um, and that is called I can't think off the top of my head. Snapseed. That's it's a free app. It's called Snapseed and again you just get a, a few more options. So if you wanted to brighten the image up or enlarge it or crop it or darken certain areas then that's certainly a a really good app. It's one that I would highly recommend. It's called Snapseed uh, and I, I guess it's for Android as well uh, but like I say I'm currently using the iPhone version. It, it's, it's on the iPad as well. So give that a give that a go. See if you can have a play around with the images and make them a little bit more detailed. Maybe it's the size that you're not quite getting right. I'm going to come back in now with a little bit of the HB because within this we've got some funny little reflections in there. So I need slight more value. Just looking for these little details. There's a a dark area within a light area. There's actually two sort of little splodges within that area. I wonder what 2020 will bring for us. It's been a brilliant year. We've had a uh, you know loads of people have joined the groups and subscribed to the channel so I, I do you know really appreciate that. I hope you um I hope you're getting something out of it. I know I'm enjoying making the the videos and the tutorials. It's a lot of fun. I didn't envisage when we started this in the middle of the year somewhere can't even remember when it was now, maybe July, June, July time. I didn't envisage us being nearly 4,000 members deep in the group and I think my channel now has got around about 4,000 subscribers. So that's wonderful. So thank you so much for your support, kind words. Uh, more and more people are joining our Facebook group and, and actually reiterating really what we've all been saying for a while, that actually we're, we're quite a grown-up group. We give each other good amounts of encouragement and if people ask for some constructive criticism then there's always people up there that are willing to do that which is fab i've not had to take many posts down i had a couple recently a couple of i don't know what they were these silly lottery posts and things like that win a million pounds and things like that which it's not what we're about, you know, I, I, it was one of the reasons why I wanted to start a group up because being part of these art groups on Facebook, you know, there's so much nonsense on there. People with their political posts and people posting images that are offensive and things like that. And, you know, it, it's just not what, you know, certainly not what I want to do. I've got no problem with people expressing their art and their feelings and things like that it's fantastic you know it's, it's what art's all about but it gets to a stage where you just think that people are doing it just for a reaction 
So, like I say, I've not had to get rid of many posts recently. It's been quite an easy season or festive season in those terms. So I'm just using this 2H pencil now just to get a little bit of value into this lighter area. It's a reflection for sure, but it's not the most striking reflection. And it's important that we balance the values out in our drawings because I don't want this to be brighter than the brightest reflection, which are these central reflections there. So I'm adding a layer of 2H with the constant brushing as well. I will find that we get some value in there too. And then I can start to add some of those slightly lighter zones with the kneaded eraser. Those swirly sort of patterns that you get. It's almost like a fingerprint pattern in some of it. I'm just going to pop my paper underneath, making sure that it's still all visible to you. Let's give that a small brush. Just evens it out a little bit without gouging into the tooth of the paper. So just taking the kneaded eraser now, I'm just making a small point. And I'm just going to have a look for some of those slight swirly patterns just the edges of some reflections in there. Just being careful to try and get as much detail in as I can. Now because we're taking this initial layer out, no matter what we do now, this is always going to be a lighter area these lines, these reflections. So as we build the values up, we're kind of starting out, we're giving ourselves a bit of a map that is then going to be easier to follow as we go through the rest of the, the drawing. We're not going to be getting lost is what I'm kind of getting at. So I'm going to give that a bit of a a brush again just to just to uh, just to dull them down a little bit but now I can really start to see that we need to ramp this value up so I've come back in with the HB and I'm going to start adding some more value to this dark zone this dark patch I need to go lighter in the center as well with it I need to remove some of that value in there. And then we've got some slightly darker areas coming off of this funny shaped, it's like a, a rectangle with horns almost, it's almost like the, I don't know, a carved pumpkin face or something like that. And I think uh, w w when we're getting down to these details, it's very easy to start getting bogged down and, and, and looking too far ahead and, you know, oh, this is taking so long and I'm, I'm never going to do it. Just focus on the area we're working on. All we're doing is we're building up a bit at a time don't get too far ahead of yourself because it really can be disheartening at times. We've got so many areas that we need to work in. So stay focused. If you need a break, take a break. 
give your eyes a rest I'm trying to keep these videos to about 30 or so minutes I think we're going to run to about 40 with this one um, I want to I want to get a lot of this area here not necessarily completed but I certainly want to get enough of it done so that you've got a, a very good idea of exactly how we're going to move forwards with it and work our way towards the rest of this car the midsection using this same kind of technique and essentially looking for the dark areas within the light areas the light areas within the dark areas and I'm constantly building the values up taking some of the reflective areas away with the needed eraser with the mono zero eraser whatever it is that we've got whatever you have need a little bit more value in there and I can actually see that on the tip of this this point there that's the darkest area so there's a little bit of a dark zone within this that I need to make sure I have in my representation of this in actual fact the whole top edge this whole top edge is slightly darker than the rest of it so that's something that I want to try and capture so I'm just taking the 2B out now and I'm just going to just gently add some value to that edge got kind of a little triangular shape in there the whitish reflection around it is following that It'd be interesting to know what that is why is that behaving like that and, and I can see now within this area it here as I'm as I'm looking at this there's some darker areas there's some shadows falling on this area, so we've got some darker areas within this dark area that would be nice to capture if possible. It's amazing how your eye starts to pick things up. The more you look at an image, the more your brain starts to translate things. I'm just working this 2B pencil now in. In this zone. And as it reaches the lip, it's slightly lighter down there. So I'm working from this inner edge of this shadow or this non-reflective area towards the the wheel the edge of the wheel trim or the wheel arch how are we looking I think we're looking okay let's give that a brush let's get some more value now this edge here this is extremely bright in our in our reference image that's one of the most highlighted areas so I'm just going to make sure that with the needed eraser I'm just taking some of that out I might need the mono zero eraser because it's very fine and tight in this area here so that's absolutely one of our brightest and then coming down into this so we've we've already started to get there we go and you see now 
that we are getting some wonderful shine and reflection. You know, if we if I remove that, if you can see this now, we're starting to become very highlighted and it's working against the backdrop. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring some value into that area now. This, this portion here, as we're looking at it, because that contrast that we're going to have against that white, the white shine of that car there is going to set it off beautifully. So I'm just using the HB pencil, just building it up. So it, it took us quite a while to build the value up in those dark areas. And, and like I say, you know, I've, I've mentioned it a few times now, I would definitely have, have used a different method if I had to do this again. Um, just because it took so long, I don't, I don't think that that really should have taken us that long. I mean, it's not a hyper detailed area. There's not a lot to it. It's just a couple of black sections, but the layering just took so long. And if we left it as a, you know, a, a dull mid-tone, these highlights wouldn't have popped the way that they're going to. And I can see now that they are going to pop. We're going to really protect them. We're going to really keep bringing that value away from these very highlighted areas. We're almost going to have mid-tone highlights and, and high highlights in this. And it's going to be important to, to capture that. We're just working our way back towards the center of the car here it's all of this section here that we're we're working in and we've already mapped all of this out you know I've already got some I've already got a layer of 2h in there which is going to give us a nice base to work off we've conditioned the paper but it's going to make that all of this I'm taking the mono zero because I've mapped out this highlighted area already. It's all of this section there. And then beneath it we've got that sort of mid-tone highlight that we don't need to be as bright. So I'm going to remove that with the brush. There we go. That's going to look rather shiny now the important part here is that we really do create this beautifully smooth value and, and transition of of value from the very harsh line where the shadow and the reflection meet or the dark part and the dark part of the reflection I guess and the light part of the reflection where they meet and also making sure that the values going away from it aren't interspersed with these white lines. You know, we don't want to be seeing the white paper coming through unless it's in an area that we wanted that to happen, a highlighted area possibly. And this layering using the 2B, the 2H, sorry, into the HB and then into the 2B is going to give us the best opportunity to keep this smooth, a lovely smooth transition. And that comes all the way up into this area of darkness there. If you've not already subscribed to the channel, go and click that subscribe button, hit the notifications bell. Uh, that will notify you whenever I drop a new video. I'm doing two a week at the minute. Uh, try and get a few more scribble arts done on the on the scribble art Sundays. Uh, they're a lot of fun. Taking the 2B pencil now, we're gonna really bring the value up. Uh, but yeah, like I say, don't forget to uh, check out my Instagram. That's ArtisticN1K again, just like the channel at artisticn1k and if you uh, just drop me a message on there I'll follow you back 
So I can I love seeing other people's work and getting inspiration, but it's it's a really lonely business being an artist. On social media, you know, it's it's very demotivating sometimes. You know, you see people with some wonderful work and there's very little reaction to it and sometimes it's it feels a lonely business so you know share your instagram share it over on the facebook page i've got no problem with that promoting one another and helping one another out um, and let's help each other grow as best as we can because it you know we we don't do this for well we don't really do it for anybody else ultimately you're doing it for yourself the moment that you start having to do things for other people or to please an audience or whatever it is, it takes some of the fun out of it. So I want to make it appear that the the edge closest to the reflection is the sort of the the darkest area, the darkest part of that. I want to really have that as the, the contrasting area to this very shiny part of the of the car and just creating a little bit more darkness along this leading edge down here where I'm working is just going to make that reflection pop and pop it will as long as we build the value up and I, I think that this project probably for, for some of you will really be one of those lessons, one of those turning points where you really stop being afraid of going too dark. I know it's something that I struggled with and I can't, I don't think I've spoken to an artist, whether they're a beginner, they're super advanced or a teacher of art or whatever, that hasn't faced that same fear. If I go too dark, I'm going to ruin it going to make the image look too dark I'm going to lose the detail or whatever it may be whatever it is we're fearful of but honestly it's what I strive for now creating value in the darkest areas in the contrast I've gone back up up to my two uh, sorry my HB now the slightly harder pencil and I can still get value out of it because I'm not taking any of the pencils to their complete um, value point I'm not pushing as hard as the pencil would, would like to go or could go I am building the value up like we say with layers I'm pancaking the different layers of pencil together so HB on top of 2B then 2B on top of HB some 2H in there as well possibly constantly adjusting the value okay so again you know, we've spent another 40 minutes and we've barely scratched the surface so what i'm going to do is i'm going to continue now working down this panel here so working this big dark area this dark area here and just creating this highlight in there and i'm also going to do the same on this wing mirror that we've already that we've already done uh, so by the time we are on to lesson 69, hopefully we'll have a lot of this area marked out. Uh, like I say, there's not a huge amount that we need to do in these areas. So let's get the bulk of the value down there. Um, I've had a blast with this again. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to post your progress. Uh, ask any comments and anything that you need to ask. Um, I'll be more than happy to give some advice. Uh, it's been a pleasure drawing again with you. Thanks so much for supporting the channel throughout 2019. Let's hope that 2020 is as just as good, if not better. Uh, and I can't wait to see some of your work. Thanks for watching. Happy New Year. Hit subscribe, smack the notifications button, follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter.